I just want to mention that this video is being produced by Teachers Connect, a social media platform for teachers and student teachers across the country. Hi everyone, my name is Caitlin and I teach in the Maryland Public School System. I teach high school English for grades 10 and 12. This year will be my third year of teaching, not including student teaching. This video will be about becoming a more effective teacher and getting better at teaching. I actually have a list of questions that I'll be reading from that come from Teachers Connect. The first question, describe a time or the first time you realized you were becoming a better teacher. Where were you? Did it involve interaction with a parent, student, administrator, or another teacher? What was the situation and what was the outcome? So my situation that I kind of realized I was becoming a, a better teacher and a more effective teacher, uh, this past year I had a student who was going through a lot of personal difficulties in his life and he was failing all of his classes and we really needed an intervention. So his guidance counselor called in teachers from his entire schedule. So this was a full round table with administration, with guidance uh, to kind of address him holistically and see what was uh, going on in his life that would affect his academics since he was failing every one of his classes. Uh, at this moment I heard his own story from his parents and he was also in the room and at this point I realized that teaching is more than just standing in front of the class. It's more of finding out how to reach the child his life, his, his goals, his dreams, what's bothering him. Uh, and at the end of the meeting, which doesn't always happen in high school because we don't have as many cross-aligned meetings where we get to meet with the student's whole uh, schedule of teachers, his entire day laid out for him. So at the end of the meeting, um, we found a solution for this child. He uh, was having some issues at home that none of the teachers were aware about, but after talking to us, we kind of got to know his interests and things that make him work hard, things that motivate him in the classroom. After the meeting, we brainstormed ways that we could reach uh, the student, and I personally changed some of my lessons just to meet his needs. This was a moment in my teaching career, which is still short, uh, that I realized that I needed to be a more holistic teacher, which subsequently made me a more effective teacher. So next question, how important is ongoing learning to being an effective teacher? I think ongoing learning is super important in any teacher's learning regime in order to become more effective and more relevant to the students, um, but not necessarily in regards to sitting through a professional development that your school provides or going to kind of sanctioned teacher activities. I think ongoing learning can be involved with watching YouTube vloggers, going on Pinterest, uh, reflecting on your own teaching throughout the summer, going through your journals, your planner, thinking about how lessons went, talking to your content team, um, even you know using social media such as Teachers Connect, posting questions, kind of connecting with other teachers out there that are struggling with the same things you are. Um, a quote that I really love from Ellie Wiesel is the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. So I think just going through different activities that don't leave you apathetic toward the way you're teaching or indifferent, but keep improving upon your practice. Um, so like I said, that could be something as simple as watching a YouTube video or sitting through a traditional PD uh, that your district provides or the state. So next question. Can you describe a time that you made a mistake as a teacher, learned from it, and applied what you learned later on? So I've never made a mistake teaching. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, one time I made a mistake teaching was probably my first year. Uh, I went through all these professional developments. I talked about collaborative learning and group projects and how much students learn when they work in groups. Uh, so right from the start of the school year, I decided to launch some group projects, some collaborative learning. I moved all the desks together so that all the learning could be collaborative. And then I didn't realize that with collaboration comes um, 
interpersonal problems that if you don't develop your classroom culture in the beginning of the year you can't move on to the collaborative stage so I kind of miss the whole oh students need to know each other's names and get along and not want to fight each other in order to do collaborative work where they're actually working together to develop learning so that was my probably one of my first big mistakes teaching was trying to push collaborative projects at the beginning of the year without first establishing a classroom culture. So on to the next question. How important were connections with other teachers, mentors to your success as a teacher? Were the colleagues you found online helpful? Um, so some of my kind of contacts, point of contacts that I would reach out to when I was having an issue uh, was my content team. So these are the other English teachers that I taught with, especially my 10th grade English teachers that were senior over me. I would kind of reach out and ask why something that I taught didn't go well, what they've done in the past to kind of overcome that hurdle because they know our students and our district. Another person I would reach out to would be my RSA. So in my district, it's called um, a Right Start Advisor. They're given out by the county for free for all teachers that are struggling um, or not struggling. It's just for all new teachers in years uh, one through three. So I'll have my Right Start Advisor for one more year, um, including this upcoming school year. Uh, my Right Start Advisors over the years have sat down with me, helped me just in a non-judgmental way talk through the things that I'm experiencing and then give me positive ways to improve upon my pedagogy um, without being evaluative or running to the principal or saying that uh, my classroom was a mess or my students were overrunning the place. So my RSA was super important. Um, I would also work online um, over in the course of this past year, I've gotten more involved with Teachers Connect, where I was able to kind of pose a question that I was going through, um, or even if I was proud of something that I was teaching. So say I did a really good interactive notebook lesson plan, I would take pictures of it and post it on Teachers Connect and see if there was anyone out there that maybe my lesson plan encouraged in a way. And just that little bit of social media interaction really encouraged me this past year. So next question. Um, if you could give your first year teacher some valuable advice about becoming a great teacher, what would it be? So as I'm entering my third year of teaching, um, I think I would give myself the advice to take time to reflect on my own approach to teaching. Uh, the first year I really kind of went crazy with trying every uh, fabulous idea I ever heard in professional development, online, on Pinterest. I just try to implement all of these new things, new techniques, new strategy, and I just try to cover everything in the first year, uh, which was great because I kind of could judge what I liked and what I didn't like, but then I didn't really take time to sit and reflect on how those lessons went. Uh, so I was just busy all the time running around instead of after a good lesson sitting and then maybe journaling or keeping a log of what went well and what didn't go well. So now as I just finished my second year, I wish I would have taken that quality time to myself um, to kind of just reflect and sit and think about myself as a teacher without comparing myself to others and trying to be that Pinterest teacher and just seeing what works for me. So last question, um, is there one thing that you're still insecure about or are working to master in your teaching practice? How are you working toward improving in this area and how will you measure, measure your su success? Um, you could discuss a goal that you have for the school year or how you're going to know that you're succeeding. Um, think smart goal. So this year I'm really wanting to focus, uh, especially with my 10th graders, but also my 12th graders, college and career readiness skills. So increasing the rigor in my classroom that, so that my students are ready to move on to the next level of learning. Um, college and career readiness skills are super important in order that your that students can move on to more advanced classes like honors or AP or IB classes, uh, as well as moving on to community college and college. Um, some of the specific skills that I want to increase in my students uh, are computer literacy skills, note taking strategies, writing stamina, reading stamina, and collaboration. But for the purpose of this video and my own reflection, I want to zero in on two of those strategies, which is computer literacy and note-taking. Uh, computer literacy is a big problem in our school. 
um, because, or the lack of computer literacy. Uh, computer, digital technology is never a problem. Uh, but my students are coming from lower income families where technology isn't the priority. They might have a cell phone, but they don't have a computer or a laptop at home where they can open up Microsoft Word or PowerPoint and improve those uh, presentation skills, their writing skills online, or even using Google Classroom. They don't have access to that. And my school itself does have technology. However, it's very limited to who can check out the technology. Because of our heavy testing schedules and testing windows, where the technology availability is really locked down for teachers that don't get Chromebook cards. So I'm a just a standard teacher, uh, honors teacher, but I don't have my own access to Chromebooks or laptops in the classroom. So in order for me to get my students involved, I have to check them into the computer lab. So one of my uh, measurable ways that I'm gonna improve my students' performance in computer literacy is by trying to check them into the library, the computer lab, at least once, once a month where they're going to interact with the Google Classroom lesson that will get them involved in typing, watching videos, pulling up the browser, maybe working with, with some Office 365 tools. Um, how I'm going to make this assignable is by using Google Classroom to monitor how they're interacting with the software and the interface and um, probably keeping a check on how well they're typing. Uh, in Maryland we have the PARC. This is a state standardized test and I've noticed that in the past my students have really struggled to write their essays on, in, the timely, in a timely fashion because they do not have access to learning how to type. So I really want to keep a check on how well they're typing and how well they're using the keyboard. Um, and then my second college and career, ready, career readiness goal that I'm trying to improve is my students' note-taking skills. So because we've really moved away, I think, as a high school, as a country, um, from the lecture-style classroom, so everyone really likes flipped classrooms and project-based learning and collaboration, which is which I think is wonderful, um, but it doesn't really set up our students for college where everything, I would say 90% of college is lecture-based. So students are really going to need to learn how to take proper notes with just a pen and paper. So this year I really want to focus on teaching them how to listen actively and then writing and communicating their learning on the paper. Um, I'm going to probably be doing this weekly by doing note-taking lessons where they use their interactive notebooks that they'll be given at the beginning of the year um, to learn how to make their learning um, reflect on the paper that they can revisit later. So those are my two uh, college and career readiness skills that I would like to see communicated in my classroom throughout the year. So that would be um, note-taking as well as digital literacy. All right, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you would like to join Teachers Connect, my link is down below in the description. Uh, and remember, learn often and teach well. I'll see you guys next time.